What's going on guys? Come here back again on another MLB The Show 20 Diamond Dynasty video. Stage 2 Team Affinity has brought Stage 2 Showdown into the mix and it is similar to the previous showdowns that we've seen but there's also a lot of unique characteristics so I want to go ahead and give you guys some tips to pretty much ensure that you are going to beat it more often than not. I think this one is a lot easier than these and I didn't even particularly find these difficult so we're going to get into that but before before we do make sure leave a like down below if you guys do enjoy these videos really would mean a lot if you could do that and subscribe to the channel if you guys have not yet I put out my third inning program predictions that'll be up at the top right watch it after this video and uh, yeah make sure hitting the sub button we got plenty of more gameplay Nolan Gorman coming tomorrow that being said let's get into it so uh, I've been primarily playing the National League just because I went over Bruce star I went after Nolan Gorman and then there's a couple other guys that want Jazz Chisholm from the Marlins so we're just gonna go ahead and draft into here so um, of course you just start your draft I've went over this process before um, once again as I mentioned yesterday in my video and as I was actually corrected there are four right-hander starting pitchers that you'll face in the final showdown and there's two lefties being Ryan Rawlison of the Colorado Rockies uh, Rockies <laughs> and uh, Nick Lodolo of the Cincinnati Reds. Uh, so usually you are going to face a righty more often than not, so kind of plan accordingly. I usually like to find the guy that's going to hit well against both. Mike Schmidt is not gonna hit that well. 64-71 against righties, I want somebody more balanced. And I think really Jim Edmonds or Cody Bellinger are gonna be the best bet. I personally love Edmonds' swing, so I'm gonna go him. Switch hitters are what you want because I think a lot of the mini bosses you do tend to face right-handers and then if you face a lefty in the final boss you're going to want to have switch hitters if that's the best choice available however i usually like to pick power a bunch so it's kind of tough for me i'm between josh bell and pete alonso i'm actually going to go pete just because power can be so helpful and it is on veteran difficulty so power is very important you don't need big vision you don't need big contact to keep your pci up because it's such a low difficulty it's going to be up regardless so I usually recommend to pick a starter. You're not seeing a whole bunch of reliever moments. So I would pretty much not focus on getting a, a good reliever. You're going to get a guaranteed silver in here anyway. Uh, this is exactly what you want. Eugenio Suarez. Uh, I think righty righty is easier to hit than lefty lefty. And Suarez just rakes no matter what. Uh, so yeah, we got our we got our two pitches. A gold starter and a silver uh, reliever. You don't need anything better than that in my opinion. Uh, I'm going to pick Ryan Braun and really just pick guys that you're good with as you start to play more showdown you're going to realize there's some guys that you really hit well with um, right here none of these are particularly my fancy uh, I guess we'll go Adam Frazier um, you do want to note that uh, it's not going to be a bad I should have picked defibrillator I don't know why I picked that usually defibrillator heart attack and clear for takeoff for the three uh, perks that I look for the most uh, but it is what it is we're going to get better ones as as we go on anyway um but yeah what you guys are gonna want to do is always make sure and look at what upcoming moment you have so entering the bottom of the ninth three three tie against the giants walk them off I'm more than likely going to win that game. So if you're doing one of those, stack your entire team. What I've mentioned before for if you're going to do a final showdown or a mini boss, I would not be worried at all to put Gregory Polanco at catcher. And as long as I have my catcher on the bench, you can go ahead and make that sub. So start off the game right away and do that so you have a better team. And even something I would recommend is if you do get into a tight situation, uh, what would be a good example? I would put Pete Alonso at third base if need be. 38 fielding isn't great, but usually you are going to be able to get away with things remember this is on veteran difficulty i always recommend for the pitching moments and we'll get in there in a second i think i don't know if we're gonna actually usually you don't see many pitching moments in these showdowns at least for the national league um as long as you do a lot of high velocity fastballs and work down with breaking balls they usually don't touch it very often at all you're not facing uh that great a competition on veteran rookie or veteran uh computer difficulty uh so having 
somebody like that, I, ha I have really no concern. Eugenio Suarez, 45 fielding on the outfield. Do not worry about that. It's not a big deal. Like, the odds that they're actually going to hit a fly ball to you there are not very high. And a lot of situations where you do have to pitch, it's just getting strikeouts or um, different scenarios like that. So I really wouldn't be all that worried about it. We're going to hop into this one right here just so you guys can kind of see my approach. If I was smart, I would have set my lineup. I was meaning to do that, but uh, really, it is not very difficult. Once you get into a groove of things with Showdown, um, really, for the most part, you want to look fastball. It is going to be a bit hard to adjust at first if you're going from playing like Hall of Fame difficulty online to veteran difficulty against the computer. It is catastrophically slow, and uh, you're going to adjust. It's just going to take a little bit, so uh, here we go into it, and uh, yeah, let's win this game. Very rarely do I do anything else but X-Wing. That's not a great swing on that ball at all right there. It's kind of hard to play while I'm talking and trying to give tips, so if I suck, uh, that definitely is the reason. But um, yeah, unless you get guys with really high vision and a huge PC, uh, PCI, I don't think power swinging is uh, really ever worth it. You're just as well off X-Swinging in most cases. And uh, this is the guy we're facing right here, Fireball, that throws 100 mile per hour four seam fastball then he has a slider and a changeup so we're going to obviously wait fast uh sit fastball if it's not fastball then you know adjust always make sure and take a look at what pitches they have some guys will only have like fastballs curveballs changeups uh meaning those are all vertical breaking things a slider goes horizontally so you're always going to want to make sure and pay close attention to that uh, once again i was all over that fastball but this difficulty unless you've been playing it like right away it takes a little bit to adjust back into things Full count, go ahead and take a walk right there. Another big thing, it's on veteran difficulty. I tend to think they throw you more strikes uh, than they would on all-star difficulty, how showdowns previously worked. Um, so you might want to be ready to swing a little bit more often. But once again, don't worry at all in getting down to O2 counts. And especially once you get perks that actually help out you once you get on two strikes, you kind of want to get yourself down into a count. Pete Alonso, that is going to touch Earth. There we go. So we're going to win the game. Uh, not very difficult, as you can see. That's just a regular moment challenge. And speaking of those moment challenges, of course, uh, how many should you play of those? Now, it really depends what you're looking for. Are you playing Showdown in order to get these cards because you want to get all of the Team Affinity Diamonds and you want to help out your team? Or are you doing it in a means to make stubs, make XP? In my opinion, you are most likely better off this is a great card by the way Righty second hit both sides is really what you want, especially a guy like Howie Kendrick. That's absolutely perfect. I do want to mention pitching perks, getting off topic for a second, are not bad. Usually you have a lot more hitting moments and all your showdowns are going to be using those. Uh, but once you build up a strong core of your hitting perks, feel free and pick some pitching ones. Don't pick a uh, spark plug or something that's never going to help you or when it rains because uh, you're never going to be winning. Do ne never pick these perks where you're winning uh, because it's really never going to help you uh, because that's just not a scenario that you usually find yourself in. Apo Taco isn't exactly my favorite, but uh, yeah, so the thing I want to mention as far as how many games you should play is usually if you are a good player, I would say, or at least an average player like me, just somewhat good. Uh, I usually stop right before the second mini boss. It usually gives me, uh, if I win everything, 9 to 15 deficit, so I have to score 6 runs uh, or 7 runs rather, getting the win. Um, not that difficult. With 20 outs on veteran difficulty we're facing the brewers also another tip you can see the logo right there that's going to determine who you're going to face uh so like i said if it's the reds logo if it's the rockies logo you're going to face a lefty and then draft accordingly so now that i know i'm facing a righty i'm probably going to be a lot more likely to pick a bunch of lefties uh because at the end of the day uh if i only play one mini boss and the mini bosses are laughably easy they are uh we're not going to get into one i don't think because it's going to be hard to get all the way to there 
Uh, but the mini bosses are you are down two to nothing you have a runner on second base and you have 15 outs to do so uh laughably easy you know you could literally hit a two run shot and then get one more run within 15 outs and you have automatically beat it so it's really easy and in that case i kind of recommend if you're not the greatest player i recommend trying to play all these moments so uh if you can get it to like an 11 to 15 so you only have to get a couple runs i think that is a great idea i I still think if you do want to try and get the most bang for your time uh, and still have it not where you have to sweat your ass off playing this game, I think you should really uh, just go up until the second mini boss and uh, go from there. If you don't like your team, then maybe go and get this one more diamond player because it's pretty much a guaranteed win for you. Uh, but that's what I would recommend. And uh, we're not going to, I'm just going to kind of throw this one away. I don't recommend unless you're really good to go down like 15 to 1 or something like that but I want to go into the final showdown and give you guys a couple more tips as far as we go from there and uh, once again if you guys didn't catch my drift uh, just make sure and stack your lineup with the best players that you have available um, because it doesn't matter you're not going to field so um, just make sure to have all of those guys loaded in there and let's go and hop into it so here we are the final showdown of course it's 15 to 1 i wouldn't do this if i was actually trying to you know win uh because i'd want better players i'd want it to be closer and i would want better perks uh so usually at this point i have all gold perks the ones that i want usually uh if i play up until the second mini boss if i win pretty much everything which i usually do i can get heart attack defibrillator clear for takeoff that's usually my uh, uh my setup that i would go for and in this case i would wait for a few pitches especially at the beginning be cautious uh, let them start to throw some pitches because if you guys are new to showdown you want to make them sweat you want that energy bar to go down and uh, the only way you're gonna do that is by seeing some pitches it is not a bad thing at all like I said to go down into an O2 count or something and if you have a basis loaded situation and it's something right on the black don't be afraid to strike out looking. It would be much better for you to do that and get one out opposed to you grounding into a double play and really getting hurt. So uh, there's our pitch, fastball right down the middle. That's really what you want to look for in showdown. Um, this current pitcher we're facing, not very good. Uh, he has a four seam, a, a curveball, a changeup, and a four seam. This is a uh, four seam. Jesus Christ. Oh, a brand new pitch. Didn't know. Uh, uh, we're breaking ground with Zach Brown um, But anyway uh, as I was mentioning he really only has vertical breaking pitches So you only really have to move like this and I would kind of recommend tracking your PCI Like this because you start here and then you move down for a curveball I think this works really well for me and it kind of helps you get adjusted to what pitch he's going to throw as long as you can Get a pretty good read on what it's gonna be. He isn't a tremendously hard throwing pitcher you're going to have a lot of success and there's our pitch once again drive it through the hole for a nice base hit i really recommend never stealing bases i just don't think it's worth it because sometimes they are going to try and pick you off sometimes they aren't and it's really not going to help you out that much uh we're not really going to play much more something else i just want to mention is tagging up be very cautious uh for example if i had a runner on third base right now and i hit a fly ball with pete alonzo let's see if i can do it probably not considering he's on first base um, but don't go don't go unless you know for a fact that you're gonna get in there uh, because it's not gonna help you if you have 14 outs to go you hit a fly ball to shallow left and even if you have somebody with good speed what more is that run gonna do for you you're not gonna hit into a double play from third and uh, from tagging out going from third to home and then throwing to first that's hopefully not gonna happen to you uh, so don't really worry about that it's just going to get you into more trouble more often than not uh, so just be cautious and either way a single's gonna get you home anyway you have 14 more outs to play with you're gonna get that run yeah uh, uh, see that's the tough one right there we put a good swing on it but one time 
Sometimes those lows and low in the strike zone, you might want to lay those off. So I'll give you guys a better look at this one. Uh, we put a good swing on the ball. Good squared up with a lot of power, Eugenio Suarez. But sometimes those lower in the strike zone lay off those, especially once you get down in the nitty gritty towards the end of the showdown and every out counts. Let's say you need two runs and two outs to go. Feel free and take a strike. Even if you think you can get a good swing on those, it can be pretty tough to actually get good results. You'll get plenty of perfect, perfect grounders, but sometimes those don't mean much. It's still going to be a ground ball hard hit, albeit, but right to the shortstop, easy double play. So, so sometimes it's better to just lay off that pitch. But that's going to do it for this video. If you guys have any other questions as far as showdown goes, uh, the meatball method does still work for showdown, by the way. It only works on uh, technically the second pitch. So once again, I recommend it more so. Like in the first moment we played where it was a tie game 3-3, it's not that helpful for final showdowns just having the second pitch of the game and you need seven runs and there's nobody on base. Uh, but that does work. And uh, yeah, if you guys did enjoy this video, make sure to leave a like down below. Thank you all for watching. Hope you guys have a great day. There goes some Saudi Yates.